Hi everyone, my name is Michael and I'm a captain and educator with the Chesapeake Bay Foundation and we're going to continue talking about living shorelines. Today I'm coming to you from my own backyard in North Carolina on Hawkins Creek. Hawkins Creek is a tidal tributary and part of the Bogue Sound Estuary. It is a thriving habitat to numerous flora and fauna and it hosts a diverse biosphere where it's not uncommon to see such animals as great blue heron, snowy egrets, oysters, various trees, plants, and even, if you're lucky, some otters if you have a keen eye and know where to look. But not everything's idyllic here on Hawkins Creek. Like numerous estuaries and waterways around the world, it's fe feeling the pressures of human expansion. From agriculture to infrastructure development and construction, these waterways are threatened by the resulting runoff pollution and erosion. These affect the ability for the creeks to sustain and thrive and host such a diverse biosphere. In the past, to mitigate the effects of erosion, the shorelines of creeks have been stabilized utilizing artificial bulkheads. These man-made structures utilize materials such as concrete, metal retaining walls, or treated lumber to try to artificially stabilize the creek. Unfortunately, they have mixed results and often do more harm than good. They can limit the ability for natural vegetation to grow and they can also stop the movement and migration of animals. Behind me, I have an example of an old artificial bulkhead and I'd like to take this moment to share it with you. If you look closely, you can see the erosion and see where the old bulkhead was used to try to stabilize the shoreline. But unfortunately, over time, those efforts have failed. So we decided to do something different in our backyard. Several years ago, we made the decision to reestablish the creek for our, in front of our house using a living shoreline. A living shoreline is a protected, stabilized coastal ledge that utilizes natural materials such as plants, sand, rock. Specifically, we utilize oyster shells and native plants found in North Carolina to create our living shoreline. So in addition to being a great natural filter and helping control erosion and what goes into the creek, our living shoreline also provides a wonderful habitat to small animals and birds. It no longer restricts its movements as they move freely in and out of the creek. And it also gives us a great foundation for new vegetation to grow. An additional benefit, which we're very happy about, is the ability for the recycled oyster shells, which are the foundation of the shoreline, to provide a new home to new oysters. So when the spat is floating in the water, that recycled oyster bags provide a perfect substrate for them to latch onto and start their new life as oysters. If you want to take a moment, we can now take a look at our living shoreline. As you can see, it's continued to grow over the years. The vegetation has kept the shoreline from moving further back. And we can see at low tide, our oyster bed foundation, which provides that filter and habitat for new oysters and animals and fish. Hi, my name is Tiffany and I am part of the education team at the Chesapeake Bay Foundation and I wanted to continue the conversation that Mike started uh, about living shorelines. Um, I want to discuss some of the benefits and I want to show you an example that we have right here locally where I work. I'm on Meredith Creek. This is the site of um, one of Chesapeake Bay Foundation's education centers and Meredith Creek is a tributary of the Chesapeake Bay. We're right in the Annapolis area in Anne Arundel County in Maryland and Meredith Creek is great because it has a lot of different examples of shorelines. Some of them are natural and some of them are engineered. I'll show you a couple different examples of the engineered and the natural, um, but then what I want to do is hop in a canoe and I want to take you down the creek to one of our neighbor's um, property where they have done a hybrid um, living shoreline. So it's 
It's taking the man-made engineering concepts, but looking at them from the natural systems approach and protecting the waterfront property from erosion um, by putting in some um, strategies that mimic what you might see in nature. And so it's preventing erosion, but it's also slowing down runoff that could potentially be bringing pollution into the bay. So it's improving water quality and helping out the homeowner as well as the whole habitat benefits. So let's hop in a canoe and let's go check it out. Here's an example along this creek of what we refer to as a living shoreline. Um, this homeowner did the rocks, a little bit of riprap, but um, they put the rocks in offshore. We can see them right now because it's uh, low tide. Um, they put the rocks in a little bit offshore and behind the rocks they had laid um, coconut fiber logs called bio logs and you can see the stakes in the sand um, and that was holding down that fiber log and then plugged all in that fiber log were all um, plants that would be perfect for growing in that intertidal zone there. So those fiber logs because they're natural materials they've broken down over time now you can see there's a lot of sand built up there. So that system, as you have some erosion um, happening, that system is trapping that sand and sediment and kind of building up the homeowner's shoreline. So now you see all of this land built up underneath that dock. So I wanted to come back to that same property um, when the tide was up, so you can kind of get a, a, an idea of what it looks like when the tide's up. So I'm on the boat now, so it might be a little bit loud, but um, there are those rocks completely submerged uh, and the water behind them is a lot smoother and you can see how it's, again, the sandy beach and those grasses are partially submerged. A common way we see homeowners protecting their shoreline from erosion is uh, bulkheading. So they're armoring their property because waterfront property is very expensive and you don't want to see your property washing away every time we have a big storm or a lot of wind or, or wave action. So putting up this uh, hard wall initially seems to stop the problem. You're not going to lose any more of your land into the water. The problem with it is, if you think about uh, Newton's laws of physics, um, you know, every, every action has an equal opposite reaction. So think about the energy from the waves. So the waves, the energy from the wave is going to hit that wall and it's gonna bounce off. It's not gonna be absorbed, it's not gonna be dissipated. It's gonna bounce, the energy is gonna bounce right off. So if you've ever sat there and thrown a, a ball against a wall, and you throw the ball down and it, it bounces and it bounces right back to you. Same principle, same idea. Those waves, if the creek is small enough, those waves will hit on the opposite shoreline and create problems with erosion on the opposite shoreline if that shoreline's not protected. So we see that, we see a lot of um, trees down and we see a lot of um, gouging out in the shoreline or undercutting in the shoreline. Um, or sometimes that wave energy will uh, bounce down and it'll hit uh, the bottom of the creek right in front of the wall so the sand or mud and it'll start to scour it out scour it out and um, eventually that wall it'll undermine it and that wall will tip forward and start to collapse so um, then then you have a, a bigger problem a big expense and um, you you have a severe erosion issue so let's just recap some of the benefits of that Living Shoreline project. 
first off for the homeowner, their erosion issue has been solved. So they're not going to keep losing their property at such an alarming rate. The nature of that project, having the vegetation there, that's going to slow down or trap any sediment that's being carried from the land towards the water. So they're building up property. So all that, that area you saw by the dock or building up that sandy area. So that's a benefit to that homeowner, right? Increasing the property value. Having it go from a sheer drop off to a gradual incline, that's called an ecotone and that's gonna provide an area of transition between the two habitats for many, many different um, uh, plants or animals. Um, when it rains, the runoff as it's coming down towards the creek is going to get slowed down and any pollution that will be carried in that runoff will be slowed down so it'll settle out or it'll be intercepted before it gets in the creek. So now we're talking about improving the water quality. So water quality improvement and then pff, the habitat. Mike already talked about a lot of the, the be habitat benefits but having that calm water behind those rocks, great nursery, lots of little minnows, little guys hanging out, lots of wading birds coming in there, getting those guys. An area of transition that's great for terrapins or horseshoe crabs. I gotta get out of the water to go lay their eggs. Um, so what can I say? It's a win, it's a win for everyone. <laughs> so we are hoping through all of our education and through our advocacy that people start to become more aware of erosion control methods involving these living shorelines and these hybrid models. And <clears throat> when homeowners have a project that needs to get done, maybe their bulkhead has collapsed or they're altering their shoreline in some way, we're hoping that a living shoreline is something they will consider.